So, Black Friday is coming along, and uh, a lot of people already have their sales going because they realize that um, having a bunch of customers trampled isn't necessarily the best way to get your sales done. Uh, some people haven't caught up with that particular practice, but I hope it catches on because it really is better that way. But you know what's not better? The fact that uh, Black Friday has a bunch of uh, tech sales, uh, and so does Cyber Monday, and so does like Cyber Week, and like just they keep on extending their sale periods to like insane lengths so that they can justify selling you more shit you don't need. And and one of the things you don't need uh, is something that I think I can make a compelling case against. Um, I've seen over my life the push for ever greater levels of smart technology. And this smart technology, the reason it's considered smart versus... Uh, I guess dumb is what the rest of it would be now. Uh, it's because it does things that the previous technology didn't do. Now think about that, right? Think about that dichotomy. Um, that now, now that all this new stuff is out, suddenly that's smart. Suddenly if you don't have that new technology, you don't have the smart technology. I want you to keep that in mind. Because I'm going to go over some stuff, and then I'm going to read you a quote. And I want you to think about these things from the perspective of somebody who understands that maybe they've been propagandized a bit, you know? I, w I want, like, a little bit of personal review here, if anything. Um, smart TVs. They have things in them that let you like interface with the TV in new and exciting ways. That is, if by new and exciting, uh, you mean the ability to use voice control or to have some sort of uh, internet experience built into your TV. I mean, I never got the appeal of those anyway, especially since, like, as somebody who had an Xbox growing up, um, the app like the, the 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 way the keyboards on those things work is always like panic inducing nearly like you you have this terribly awkward keyboard that you have to interface with by pressing the arrow keys and enter to get to certain keys so it takes you literally uh like <laughs> so long to type out whatever whatever it is you're searching for God forbid you need to put in a password or something, um, or like a serial number. Like, smart TVs are just the worst uh, anyway. Uh, they're not actually smarter than plugging a computer in to your TV and just going to Netflix on your web browser. It's not better, it's just inbuilt. So, what is that appealing to? Well, it's appealing to people who don't fucking understand computers. And it's the same with this fire stick bullshit or whatever comes out that's like a lot like it. You know, whatever these like you plug it into your HDMI thing and then suddenly your your normal TV is now a smart TV. So it can be just as ass as the new sm but the point is, you know, there's some criticisms I have of of smart TVs, right? Um, but also, I don't know who remembers it, but, like, there were a lot of privacy concerns surrounding smart TVs, because they have things like those, whatever, uh, commands, right? They can passively record a lot more information, you know? And, and it's not just TVs, you know? Your smartphone, it's no longer a device for calling people, it's now a device for pretty much everything people do, and if I'm right about the central bank digital currencies, it will soon be a device that you rely on to be connected financially with the world, meaning live in this state capitalist fascist hellscape. Um, that is what we're going for, right? Because uh, smartphones follow the same pattern. They 
promise to be the future, but they don't tell you what that future is. So you're constantly like, you know, bombarded with the yet more smart smartphones. Smartphones are getting smarter. Ever every generation of smartphone is just a little bit smarter now. Give us your money. Now give us your money. Now give us and it's like this, like all the time. And it's not just phones, because the same technology is being put into every fucking thing. Like bathroom mirrors, uh, fucking your refrigerator, your garage, your car. Um, and all of this uh, makes it more complicated to do basic shit. Yeah, like I couldn't put things in my fucking cold box before and then shut the door on the cold box. I need to input my data and let you keep track of what I have in there. I can't use my brain for that. Computers should take over that uh, for me. <laughs> like, how is that not awful? How is that not just removing power from the common person and, and like, telling them that it's okay to cede all of their personal autonomy to machines? You know, oh, I can't drive my car. Please self-drive it for me. No way they'll turn that off if they don't like what you're saying or doing or being. You know, um, <laughs> no way that your, your online purchases could ever be attached to your ability to drive your... Did you know that the, the, the electric car manufacturers want to auto-breathalyze everyone to make sure that they're not under the influence that's insane. That's dystopian. Because if they have the ability to do that shit to your car, it's not your car. They're driving it for you. They're piloting it for you. They're deciding whether or not you can drive your car or not. It's not your car. You're just leasing it from, like, the world's worst usufruct. Because they can fucking kill you with a car. Or they can, they can disable your car so that you can't escape certain things. Or so that you can't keep doing what you do if, if that pisses them off. And, and like, you know, oh, like everything has to be smart. Everything has to be smart and that means that everything has to be connected to your identity. Enter Bluetooth. Enter sensors and data receiving and transmission like... You know, the, the, the way that they can, like, geolocate you wherever you are, even if you have your phone, like, locked in a piece of aluminum foil, they can still bounce sound off of it and triangulate you that way. It's like that, but everywhere, even when you're driving. Um, and no right to repair either, according to the state and its corporations. You know, no right to repair. That's why it's been so hard for people like Louis Rossman to push through things like right to repair. That's why we're still talking about it, because these mega corporations are locking you out of your technology and then charging huge fees and invasive policies uh, to repair shops to use their independent repair programs and all that fucking bullshit. You know, like maybe this is a bad thing. Maybe tech giants have too much fucking power. And maybe. Every new smart thing is just another way that they can get more power. And it gets worse because Neuralink is going to hook your brain into that matrix. Everything, the Internet of Things, will then become the Internet of Bodies. And, like, not just that, but, like, they, they want to do this because that's input-output. They will literally be able to lock you into a mentality or manipulate your thinking. And people don't understand that or they don't care. Because plenty of people are saying, hey, yeah, it's great. Elon Musk, daddy, put your wires in my brain. Because they're fucking brainwashed already. So they might as well get brain penetrated as well. So it's it's just bad. It's not good. There's nothing good about the Internet of Things because we have a state. 
because we have corporations protected by that state who can get away with a wide variety of things that are fundamentally evil and dystopian because of what they're doing, because of what they're making, and most importantly, because of what they can sell to you. The ways that they can get you to lock the chains onto your own wrists, to apply the locks to your own manacles. That's what they're doing. And I just thought I'd bring that up, you know? And, like, it's not even just that simple either. Because here's how they get you to accept it. They get you to accept it by not only external pressure, by having a bunch of, uh, like, external... Uh, bullshit that society can place on you if you don't cooperate. Um, Ever-increasing demands that you have their technology in order to interface with society at fucking all. And ever-decreasing inc- ever uh, amounts of alternatives in that regard because the greatest wealth transfer in history just happened and they fucking took a bunch of money from poor people and gave it to the super rich who made billions during the pandemic. Billions. While uh, there were a significant amount of people who were starving, suicidal, committing crimes just to get by, the elites made off like fucking bandits. And they did so, not only so that they could make their money, that was like an interesting side effect, but so that they could increase their control because there's less fucking alternatives. And there's less alternatives, which means there's less alternatives when they decide to start from the top down, from their Bilderberg-esque ivory towers. They get to then say... We're going to move to this privacy-free central bank digital currency. We get to mandate that you have your phone on you at all fucking times. We get to say that you don't get to live in our society if you don't do what we say. And they did it all by telling you, Ah, that's a good boy. You're so smart. You're not like those dumb people with their dumb products. You bought the smart product. You did the smart thing. You're not dumb like them. You bought the smart product. You're all smart. You're very smart. Gold star sticker. You get it. That's how they got you. And people buy it hook, line, and sinker. That's why I'm so fucking amused when people claim that Apple is the phone brand... For the, 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 the super enlightened. Or, like, you're poor if you have an Android. I think I'm pretty rich if I can protect my data better than you. I think I'm pretty rich if I don't overspend on a walled garden where nobody can develop apps unless the fucking corporation says they're good. You know, there's, there's barely any side loading and it might fuck up your phone. But you know what? They're fine with that because they get the trendy-ass fucking smart tech. the boy, you got your Apple! Good! And you know, there might be some technical improvements in certain Apple products over certain Android products, but they're not worth my fucking privacy. They're not worth my autonomy. And even then, I'm still not perfect in this regard because an Android is a smartphone too. So... I'm still being bought in some way. I'm just trying to reduce my impact here, you know? I'm trying to be bought less. And in doing so, I am separating myself from this new matrix of control they're trying to build. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting disconnected. That's what you should do. That's what we should all do. But that's what they're making it increasingly harder to do. And why? Because not only do they have all these external pressures, but they also have your internal pressure. There is a song that always fucks me up and makes me extremely angry, uh, nearly to a degree that I can't mention on YouTube. But just to say, it makes me want to redacted. Uh, For legal reasons, that's a joke. 
Uh, but either way, the song is Adam Freeland, We Want Your Soul. Specifically, this version made for YouTube uh, by fans with, like, interspersed commercial footage and shit. And then footage of what the result of this society is, like police beating the fuck out of each other, war, like, well, p the citizens anyway, war, a variety of, like, catastrophes and terrible things, just, like, mashed together <laughs> with these fucking advertisements, because that's how it is. And then you, like, you look at all these competing products that advertise in the exact fucking same way, and you realize, hey... Maybe we live in friendly fascism. Maybe we have, like, a little bit of manufactured consent. You know? And the song is, you know, like, detailing all these terrible little minute details that the state has on you because you gave it to them in order to participate in the fucking society that they built. It's sort of like, you know... It, 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 a, mi a macrocosm of the microcosm of being in just a prison. You know, if you do good enough, you can go to the commissary with your terribly small amount of money that we gave you for way too much work. You know, and way too shitty work in shitty work conditions. And you get to then go to the commissary and buy your basic ingredients that you can maybe cook if, uh, if, if, if you hid enough things away. You know, if you did just like enough hiding you can maybe get a semblance of freedom but not much you know but it's not that much different on the outside it's just bigger because they've built a prison around us all and that's the th the thing that they get you to do they get you to be okay with that prison and it's easier than ever you ever hit accept cookies on a website? Congratulations, you just gave a fuck ton of data to the, the, the state and the corporations that they built. You just did that. Why? Because these cookies follow you across websites and see how you are. They want to make sure that they have as much of an idea as possible of the kind of consumer they're building from the ground up. You are the product when the service is free. And they're treating you like cattle with little numbers stamped on you. And they're about to make that official by demanding you walk around with a passport in order to do basic fucking services of any sort. You know? You know? So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there might be a fucking problem with that. You know? Maybe the people who run the algorithms, maybe the people who built this from the ground up have a fucking incentive in order to do this and maybe it's a self licking ice cream cone a self perpetuating machine an ouroboro of fucking filth that they roll you around in for fun profit and power of course are nice additions to this thing but these are truly truly maladjusted people who if they didn't have massive amounts of money and influence and they weren't part of the right bloodlines, people would call them insane and say they should be locked up and thrown away. Yeah, let's dance in front of a burning fire in front of a massive owl statue. We're very normal. And totally not sacrifice children in front of it. That's not what we're doing. It's totally a fake child. <laughs> That's the people these are. Truly evil people. And you're giving them your information for free. In exchange for interactions with the smart economy. So that people who understand how these algorithms work can use them against you and make sure you're controllable. That's it. That's all. And they sold it to you Based on the idea that you're smart if you do what they say. I don't buy it for a fucking second. But hey, I'm just an insane conspiracy theorist. Ignore everything I say and be sure to insult me regularly. And uh, don't retweet this. Don't like this. Don't share it on Facebook. Don't do any of that shit. Because I'm wrong. And you know what? I'm so wrong, 
Let me read to you this quote. Quote, the conscience, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together as a smoothly functioning society. In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of our politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. This guy is Edward Bernays. That's a quote from his book, Propaganda, teaching people how propaganda works. Not necessarily even as a warning, just as a, hey, we need to do this. Otherwise, society will fucking die. Well, congratulations, you just made a great case for social death. Because let me be real clear here, he proved it. He proved he knows what he's talking about because he ran one of the most successful propaganda campaigns ever. Look up the torches of freedom. It's nothing more than the same bullshit you're hearing about smart devices or follow the science or build back better or, or, or any of these other terrible little woo things that they're disguising as intelligence. Just repetitious bullshit garbage from the elites telling you how to think. It's the same thing. It's the same shit. It's the same shit over and over again. And let me be real clear here. The Torches of Freedom campaign was all about using women to make cigarettes a symbol of freedom. Yeah, we're empowered. We're independent and strong women. We went around with our cigarettes and acted all badass. We're smart. We're good. We're better than you because we did this thing. Well... That thing was made by men. You were still puppeteered from the ground fucking up. And it's like this in so many situations. Like, I'm going to make so much content around Edward Bernays because I feel people do not understand his influence on the fucking public perception of the public. Look at this. The wires which control the public mind as though there's only one public mind. That's the way they think of you, a neuron in their neural net. And if you disagree, they will pluck you out just like a lobotomy. So, why don't you be that tall blade of grass with me? Because the more of us there are, the faster we gum up this mower. This has been Jeremiah, EXE on Twitter. Smash the fucking state.